it up for children's God. <coughs> Are you all set? You gonna come up? And I got this great book. Merry Christmas, Mary Crowd. So, are you excited? Hey, so we're going to make everybody nervous, okay? I know that you can't read that. This says cold. And so right now, it's yeah, look at his big smile. Look at everybody freaking out, not knowing what I'm going to do with this cold back. All right, we're going to hold that for later. I got my gloves. We'll see how it goes. You want to come down there? It's a nice story. Winds are blowing, skies are snowing. Where did this feathered fellow go? Look at this bird, huh? And this kitty sees him, right? Super exciting. Round the chimneys, over the yards, down the busy boulevards. There's the bird again. Look at the lights, look at the car. You ready for some snow? I love snow. A button here, a feather there, a crab can find things, a crow can find things anywhere. Straight up tips up, a twigs and twine. Berries from a twisty vine. Look at the bird. It's got all kinds of stuff, grabbing all kinds of things. I wonder why. Across the plaza, through the zoo, along the crowded avenue. Wow, there's the bird. Look at the zoo. Look at the people checking out the animals. Nice. In the market, past the shops, his crow is making all the stops. Do you see the bird in this one? I don't see him. Where is he? Huh? There he is. What? What's that? The bird, I know. <laughs> a broken chain, a lonely sock. I was looking for that face. A single key without its lock. Look, look, look what he's got the key. He's getting stuff, some scraps of Cloth, a crimson bow, a perfect sprig of mistletoe. Ready? <laughs> Here we go. Hustle, bustle, coming, going. So much busy to and fro it. What's his hurry? What's his mission? What's his secret expedition? Expedition's like a trip. I know. There he goes again, flying through. Got racing cars. Do you have any racing cars at home? Yes, yes, we do. Check it for like help here. I like it. That's it. Candy wrappers, red and brown. A treasure lost. A treasure found. The bird's got all this stuff, right? Where is he going when he comes past here? Amidst the seats, up and down the snowy streets he goes. There, yes, good, good, good picking. Wow. Jangly tags, a tiny wheel, a luscious curly orange peel, strings of beads, a tinkly, a tinkly bell. What's he go? What's he doing? Looking tired. I know, Mom. I'm going as fast as we can. All right, so here he goes. He's flying in. Where do you think he's going with this? Oh, look at the Christmas tree with all the stuff. He put, and look at all his friends. Is that great? Is that, look at, and all the people are coming. You see, you see he's finding Christmas everywhere and all the stuff. I know. <laughs> and then he laughs. Merry Christmas. So you can find Christmas everywhere. You can find it in, in all kinds of balloons. And you can find it in, um, I don't know, uh, bells and strings. You know where I like to find Christmas? In the snow. And so I'm just going to put these gloves on. Because it's just cold in there. So it might be cold. <laughs> Don't tell the trustees. Well, I can't open the bag with this gloves. Hold on. Here we go. Did you guys bring your jackets and stuff? Oh, my goodness. 
Okay. Ready? You ready? Okay. It's going to be cold, but I'm going to go. You ready? Hold on. <laughs> one, two, three. You got one, I got one. <laughs> There's snowballs, but they're not real. It's totally, but I can find Christmas in all these. Listen for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures. This reading is from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from the old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, 
and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Please rise as we sing the glory of God. Thank you so much, Audrey. Let us pray. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like to begin this morning with a story from a book that I've shared before with you. The book is entitled, Souls Along the Way. It's a story about Kathleen and Bill. She came up to me on Christmas Eve after one of the services. He came up to me on Christmas Eve after one of the services. I knew her from several interactions in our church, in church school. I had never met him. She had a classic child smile. He wore the solemn face of a hurting man. She had her arms extended toward me, toward me and was holding a wrapped gift. He held his arms folded firmly across his chest. She bubbled over with joy and enthusiasm at being, at being in church with people who cared about her. He was skeptical and cynical about church, and he told me so. She said that a wrapped gift was for me and my family. He said this was the first time he'd been to church in a long time. She gave me a happy hug. He shook my hand. She said she'd see me in church next Sunday. He said if any church could bring him back to God, this was the one. She skipped away with joy in her heart. He walked away, hoping to find joy in his heart. They may seem very different, but they are very much alike. They are both seeking God. Today's gospel reading gives us a story that does not have so much excitement that we're used to during the Christmas season. In Advent, we feel as if there should be a vast boulder rolling down a hill, bringing us to the birth of Christ. Instead, we hear the story of Mary traveling over the hill country to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. And the majority of the story today is two women pregnant, standing across from each other, 
and talking. Not much of an adventure movie that you would kind of point out. However, the power of the story tells us the importance of what's about to happen. Two people, a young woman in her teens, pregnant and unmarried, stands across from a woman who the world says is too old to have children. The world has forgotten. She too stands pregnant in that space. If two people could seem more different than Bill and Ellie, and Kate rather, those two would be in the same boat. How diametrically opposed, how incredibly different they looked to each other. Yet they had something in common. They had the expression of God's love. The love of Elizabeth, that she held John inside of her. The Baptist, the one who would be pointing out and picking out to everyone, this is the Messiah. And standing across from her is Mary. With the Messiah within. What's amazing is Elizabeth's response that her child moves within her. And what she says is profound. She says these simple words. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? I wonder if we feel like that so often. Why has this come to me? Why has God dragged me out of my perfectly comfortable life? my perfectly comfortable experience and made me see what I never wanted to see. I often reflect about my mentor, who I was super excited when I got a church in Waterloo, fresh and young and dynamic. It would be great, we'd sit around, we'd relax, we'd sing some hymns, everybody would get along and then all of a sudden I showed up on the first day. People were throwing me the keys going, hey thanks, we're out of here now. The church had all, the steeple was falling down. Things were not the picture as story told moment I had anticipated. And what's more, I realized the importance of mission and ministry. There were times where I felt just like Elizabeth. I thought to myself, my goodness gracious, why has God come to me and started to poke me about the needs of the world? Why has God even poked me and made me try to be a pastor? I was really very comfortable being a police officer and a school teacher and a school administrator and blah, 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 blah. I had my ways already figured out. I didn't need to have to travel across to the middle of the country to go to seminary. But that's exactly what God did. God said to me that God loves you, and for that you will be given the burden of the work that you are called to today. Each of us, we think of ourselves in so many different ways. An atmosphere that we, we, we confess to, oh, I feel terrible about myself, I feel shame, I feel sadness, I feel awkwardness, I feel isolated, I feel alone, I feel disturbed. And the answer from a loving God is, I love you, welcome home, I couldn't care more about you than I do at this moment. And the wonder that has to be in our eyes and in our minds and our hearts as we lead up to the season of Christmas is why me? Why does God pick on me? It'd be great if we were Job, but that's not the kind of picking on that's going on. No, instead, as Dave and Rico, um, who writes the book, The Sacred Heart of the World, says, it is ironic that a symbol of a generous love became focused on our need to make reparations. So often we walk through the, our communities, we drive down to the mall, we see the lights, we see um, the Santa Claus, we see all the things that tell us that it's Christmas. And we overlook the fact that what Christmas is about is that God comes into the world to love us. We hear the story in the gospel today about Mary, who carries Jesus to this hill country. As someone who grew up in Union, this is feeling pretty hill country up here. 
Yet God comes here each and every day into your heart and into my heart and says that you are my beloved. For you I am well pleased. Let me allow myself to pull you out into this rich relationship. The words that um, Mary, uh, that Elizabeth says to Mary are on our hearts and on our minds so often. Lord, why have you picked me? Yet it's important because we have to ask, why would God not pick us? Why would God not pick people who want to serve others? Why would God not pick people who chose vocations, who chose lives, who chose relationships and parenting and grandparenting and being someone else's child? Because you have the inherent dignity from the very beginning of a person felt with God's goodness and God's love. The heart of Christianity is the heart of Jesus a passionate devotedness to the well-being of humanity. You are drawn to this place. You are drawn to this community. You are drawn to this people for that one thing. In the depths of your heart is a sense of passionate devotedness to the well-being of the world. And that, that is the answer that Mary gives by showing up at Elizabeth's house that day. That within her is this ever-flowing, ever-inspiring, ever-illuminating Christ that points to John in her stomach and he does the loop-de-loop -loop and says, you, you're going to take risks. You're going to go out there and dunk people in the water. And you're going to talk to people about a revolution of the heart, of the mind, and of the soul. John the Baptist is not the Messiah, and neither are every one of us. Yet we are called to stand in this moment, this pregnant moment before Christmas, and say, I'm going to start doing some loops. I'm going to dance around in this place and this time. I'm going to be part of the transformative power that is Christmas. I'm going to restore the hope in my neighborhood, in my community, in my workplace. To be Christian is to be possessed by that same passionate intention. Indeed, to say that God created the world is to affirm that it vibrates at a pitch identical to the nature of God, who is love. Today, I ask you to vibrate. I ask you to see what it feels like to be in different places. Sometimes we're jumping around super excited, and sometimes we're heavy in the heart. Sometimes we're carrying stuff that feels light as a feather, and sometimes we feel like we're carrying iron ore in our pockets. But we are called humbly to enter into this story, to be invited into Christmas, to invite the love of God into our world. And so I ask you this day, I ask you until the 24th, to keep looking for the people who have Christ in the gut, who know what it's like to have the illuminated expression of who it is and who we belong to. And to say, and it's okay to say it, why has, the, why has this happened to me? That the mother of my Lord has come. And the answer is this. The fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. You, each and every one of you, are the fulfillment of what has been spoken by the Lord. As the prophet Micah said, a powerful royal community will happen because of Christ. And that community is sitting in these pews on this day, always has been, and always will. Amen. 
each Sunday we come together for um, a time of prayer to share with one another celebrations and concerns. Do we have any uh, celebrations and concerns written down that Nothing? So I'll take out for all of you uh, folks uh, who had kids in the early 2000s, my handy dandy spirally notebook. <laughs> What are our prayer concerns? Harold, did you have your hand up? Yeah, um, for my dad. For Harold Senior, okay. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have a prayer concern? For Lou and Lee, and the families in hospice. For Lou and Eileen and families in hospice. Jim. For Sue. For Sue. Okay. Patty. Patty. <coughs> oh, okay. Just like that. <coughs> Olga. Olga. O L G A Olga. Yes. Okay. I want to say Eileen, but I know that that's wrong for your name. Oh, yeah. I knew it was like an AI something. Oh. It's bad enough I lost the bulletin. For the family of a little boy Kyle. For Kyle's family? <coughs> John. Mateo. Uh, Mateo. M-A-T-E-O. Mateo. Sound good. Celebration for the family, the, the family that is uh, uh, working with us to, to walk to the main Yes. Okay. Barbara, sorry. Molly, my cat. Molly, your cat. Celebration or concern? Concern. Concern. Okay. Molly, the cat. John, sorry. My brother-in-law, Jordan. Okay. A prayer concern for you. Uh, for one of our local community members, uh, a local character, Fred, who passed away this week. Um, I didn't know him well, uh, but he came here for our Easter breakfasts and uh, our Easter downtown services, and he did pass away. So if we can keep him and his family in our prayers. Absolutely. Let us pray. Loving God, we bow our heads this morning in prayer. In this pause, we are aware that you surround us. God, help us to pause longer so that the awareness that you are around us strengthens us reminds us of your incredible forgiveness and mercy and restores us to the life that you constantly call us that is filled with love. This morning we hold up in prayer the great concerns for Harold and for Lou and Arlene. We lift up the families who are in hospice with hearts filled with hope and expectation. We share the names of Sue and Patty, and Olga. Loving God, we pray for Kyle's family during this difficult time. Let us not forget the importance of our love for Mateo and Jurgen. We lift up the passing of Fred and ask that his family be comforted during this time of grief. We also hold up Molly, a beloved member of the family, we ask God that in these difficult moments you give us courage and give us strength in a difficult time. Lord, in addition, we lift up in celebration the family who will celebrate with us the walk to the major. We are grateful to continue to have saints around us as we grow in mission and ministry locally and globally. We have too many 
prayers to ask. Too many to speak of. But Lord, you know them. And we humbly offer them to you with great expectations. As a community, we bind ourselves together this day with our hearts, our minds, and our voices, praying as Jesus taught his first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Each Sunday when we come together, we pause for uh, a time of tithes and offerings. As always, I am incredibly grateful for the generosity of this community that continues um, each week. And so, and as, as in gratitude for um, your generosity, for your tenderness, for sharing your time, your treasure, your talents, I pray this time, at this day, that we celebrate the giving of tithes and offerings, and our ushers will wait upon you. Generous God, we pray that your life would so overflow in us that our neighbors, both near and far, would be fed by your Spirit. Use the offerings of our resources and our lives to proclaim the gospel, spread your love, and bring forth your kingdom. For the sake of Christ we pray. Amen. Okay, we're in uncharted territory here. Do we start singing the hymn? All right, would you please remain standing for our final hymn, Away in the Manger. It's number 217 in your hymn book.
and those who have gathered in your church around the world. Let us walk these last few days in Advent filled with love and expectation, knowing that you have called us to leap forth, to hear the vibration, and to know that the birth of Christ is at hand. Let us always be mindful, thoughtful, and prayerful of these words. God loves you. So do I. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.